Inside this building on the Lake City Square is a company that builds magnificent instruments. Dobson Pipe Organ Builders was started by Lynn Dobson in 1974. The current owner is John Panning, and the shop employs 22 people, which makes them one of the larger companies among about 50 companies building new pipe organs in the United States. We're on a very quick tour of the shop. Pipe organs have been made since 200 B.C. All the parts were once done by hand with small tools, but now you can see there are many time and labor-saving machines that have allowed organs to evolve into complex works of art that look and sound amazing. The many parts are made and assembled in the shop then disassembled, packed into semis, and shipped to their permanent home, where they are reassembled to make the final instrument. Dobson builds instruments for churches and concert halls all over the United States. They have one in England and will send one to Australia soon. The next one is close to home, in Iowa. Here you see the upper half of the organ for the University of Dubuque. A, the science of acoustics is a vital part of organ building. For the instrument to sound right in the church or concert hall, materials that make up the ceiling, walls, furniture, and floor covering must be considered. Angles of walls and ceilings are important to how the sound will reverberate or bounce off the hard surfaces. Technology is a large part of building and playing organs in the 21st century. Computers are used to design the case, the wind systems, the pipes, and the electronic mechanisms that power the whole instrument. Computer-aided machines cut holes to hold pipes in place, as well as decorative woodwork on the front of the case, which is called the facade. A pneumatic or air-powered sander makes quick work of smoothing all the word surfaces. A rotary laser transit is used to level the foundation. The receiver beeps as it gets information. You can see why a level foundation is so important as the crew assembles and then disassembles the south case for the St. Thomas organ in the erecting room of the shop in Lake City. If you pay attention to light changes, you can see how many days this process takes. Here is the CNC router, which cuts a design into wood based on a design sent from a computer. It's used to cut holes for the tow boards where the pipes stand on the top of the wind chest. These are very small pipes. Here is the final product with lots of different holes. It's also used to cut decorations and parts of wood pipes. Here it shapes the ends of racks that hold the pipes in place. This is the tuning process. Here's tonal director and owner, John Panning, 
to describe the portable keyboard system used at St. Thomas in New York City, where the keyboard, known as the console, is in a space under one of the organ chambers and behind the choir. You can't really hear anything well from there. What we're seeing here is a portable keyboard setup that allows us to play the organ wirelessly. Of course, the organ is normally played from the main console, but that's actually a fairly disadvantageous place to hear the organ. So this setup with this laptop and this keyboard allows us to listen to the organ anywhere in the room. But the basic work in the beginning is to listen to it from this location just opposite the main part of the organ. Uh, but at certain points when we're wanting to have a different perspective, we'll just simply take this entire setup out into the main and listen to the different locations. And we shouldn't forget all the electrical control systems inside the organ that open the valves letting the air into the pipes. Engineering plays a huge part in the process of designing and assembling the whole instrument. All the small parts must fit together perfectly and many must be lifted using precise calculations for weight and measurement. You're seeing a Zimbelstern or star bells for the first the design, then the mechanism for playing one using bells, and the final product high atop the organ facade. Here is the positioning of a wind chest, a special box that pipes stand on. It contains the valves that let air into the pipes. The green machine that you see is the lift that was used to hoist pieces of the organ at St. Thomas Church in, Lake, in New York City. The crew worked at night to avoid pedestrians and traffic, which fill the streets and the sidewalk of Fifth Avenue. Here you see it coming into the church. All of this is seen much faster than real life. This shows how the lowest 32-foot pipe was put into position in the St. Thomas organ. Precise calculations of weight and three-dimensional space were made before anyone moved the pipe, and a special crew of riggers was hired to help. The whole process took about 12 minutes. Math is an essential element in organ building, from measuring the space for the organ to fit, to making sure all the parts come together, to setting down the precise length, circumference, 
thickness of metal or wood and the ratio of bottom to top of each pipe, a process called scaling the pipes, so they sound good together. We'll finish with the full setup of the instrument in Carmel Valley, California.